Hello, good evening, and welcome. My name is Brendan Circuses, and I should now be back in glorious 1080p, uh, as I believe I fixed my camera. I may look a little weird because I'm in a different position and a different angle of things. I've got a new monitor, and it's much bigger than the old one, so I've had to shift everything around. Also, I've lost my glasses, so I dropped them in a, down a sewer grate, and I won't have new ones until Wednesday. So, uh, I may not be able to see the camera properly. Um, other than this, everything should be fine. Uh, this is response to, uh, I still always go to adjust my glasses if I haven't got any, uh, to an article in the Daily Mail and also a video um, <laughs> that concerns a a woman called uh, Mustafa, Baha Mustafa, who you, I'm sure you all heard of by now, um, is an equality officer for a university. Uh, <laughs> And she, sorry, not a, a diversity officer. Is that quality? The, the two things go hand in hand. Um, and she is accused of sexism and of racism, which I think is justified, uh, considering that she wanted to, and successfully did, ban white people and men from an equality rally. Yeah. So this. this should be obvious to anyone with a brain that she is being sexist, that she is being racist because she is discriminating based on sex and based on race but not to feminists oh, no, 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 to feminists this, this doesn't count it's not really sexist, not really racism uh, because of their weird nebulous kind of wibbly wobbly definitions of power See, because they redefine words um, with a, a sort of a social uh, Marxist bent in which they apply Marxist ideology instead of to sort of a class um, to uh, demographics based on things like your skin color, like your sex, uh, and as such, they re uh, they detect in these um, differences between uh, demographics uh, some sort of power dynamic uh, which uh, either justifies or does not um, discrimination against one of the other demographics. Uh, in this instance, it is assumed that the most powerful in this term, this power um, of each of the uh, races that they recognize, even though they claim that there is no such thing as race and that race doesn't exist and that we're all the same, um, is the white race, the Caucasians, people like myself. Um, they claim that uh, despite the fact that we're all equal and all the same and there's no difference between anyone, that uh, being white makes you in some way more powerful than uh, an Asian, than a Hispanic, than a black person. Therefore, uh, anything that is discriminatory towards you from someone in the other demographics does not count because they define things like racism, things like sexism, as instead of being simply discrimination based on race, based on sex, which makes sense, and that's what pretty much everyone um, uh, agrees is the definition of these words, and that's what they use them for, and that's what they recognize they're used for. Uh, they use uh, discrimination plus power against this nebulous, uh, sort of nuanced, very, very nuanced um, concept of power that doesn't in any way adequately explain anything and is not in any way adequately explained by the feminists using it. Uh, but still, um, the article says, pictured, which I'll put a picture up, diversity officer who banned whites from her anti-racism event at British University, wiping away fake tear in front of no white men sign. Um, uh, sorry. Elected diversity officer Baha Mustafa caught in racism and sexism row uh, of a Facebook picture showing her faking tears in front of a no white men sign. Uh, she was criticised for uh, planning the diversity meeting that banned white men. Goldsmiths University students arranged meeting to diversify curriculum, which sounds pretty freaking terrifying to me. Students should not in any way be in control of what is and is not taught in a university. The whole point of universities and other things other places of, of, of learning is that as a student you go there in order to learn from people who know more than you, who know things that you don't. 
if you as a student dictate what you are taught and what you what ideas what concepts what information you are allowed to be given then all you're doing is setting up for yourself an echo chamber that uh, reinforces only those sincerely held beliefs that you cling to in your strange feminist utopia where never do you hear a challenging opinion or uh, an uncomfortable thought and that does not sound in any way positive to me uh, anyway, the article begins oh sorry the um, picture whew, picture is up uh, it's obviously her there looking like a total cunt saying no white cis men please fucking cis men bastards all of them and oh ma male tear oh shit where's the um, yes hang on, hang on. Um, there you go thank you thank you Lizzie because it does ma male tears it means it means semen right um hmm. Uh, th this is the university equality officer at the centre of a sexism and racism row pictured in front of a no white men sign showing their tears dropping into a cup which means semen uh, a picture of Baha Mustafa 27 which is a weird name but at the same time quite cool Mustafa, that's a cool name student union welfare and diversity officer at Goldsmiths University in London pretending to cry was posted online as she was being accused of discrimination she was being discriminatory the handmade poster no fucking shit it's just a piece of paper with fucking felt tip on it of course it's fucking handmade fucking idiot also it refers to a ban on the cis or cisgendered men a term used uh, of those who whose mental gender and physical sex match which is the opposite of transgender this is a a term I find confusing. I don't see any reason why we have it, but um, it, it's, the whole transgender issue is a bit strange. Uh, I have no issue with transgender people, not in the slightest, um, at all. If you believe yourself to not be um, to have a, a mind that is closer to um, the sex you were not assigned when you were born, then that's totally fine by me. I will accept that in whatever way uh, you see fit. And if you wish to uh, change, you wish to have like a, a sex reassignment surgery or whatever to make yourself feel better about um, the mentality you possess, uh, then that's totally fine. I can, I'm perfectly willing to accept that. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. Go, go ahead, good for you. But then when it comes to Feminist to feminism, there seems to be this strange divide. Some of them outright uh, deny the existence of um, transgender people or, or um, believe them to be I don't know, evil in some way. But this is not that. This is not the the sort of um, prevalent opinion. The prevalent opinion is one that's quite contradictory and a bit strange. And it seems to be this uh, among feminists uh, is that gender is a social construct, and so uh, which. It is. Gender is a social construct. Sex is not. Sex is uh, scientifically verifiable. We can say, let's have a look at your physiology, let's have a look at your um, uh, DNA, let's see what you are. We will be able to objectively recognise that you are male, you are female, those are the two options. You are one of these things. That is undeniable unless you're a complete fucking moron. Sex exists. Gender, on the other hand, is entirely uh, mental. There's no, and that's not to say crazy. That is to say, it 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 occurs mentally. It is entirely in the the realm of of thought. It's not a a physical thing. Um, and the invention of gender has caused untold suffering and misery and the deaths of many. Um, but no, fuck off, fucking sirens all the time. Um, but this this weird uh, concept that the, the feminists typically have is that uh, gender. Uh, is a social construct um, and that men and women are exactly the same and that there are no differences and that sexual dimorphism is not a thing and that science basically is bollocks and that biology doesn't exist. But then they say, unless you're transgender, in which case uh, then g gender is definitely a thing and it definitely exists and there are definite differences and, and, and if you misgender someone then that's an act of violence! And it's this kind of strange, uh, hypocritical contradictory bollocks that concerns me um, there's all, all this you know doesn't exist doesn't exist doesn't exist unless this
At which point it suddenly becomes, actually, it's always existed. It's definitely true, and you must believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, you're a bastard. And think, well, okay, so, uh, fine. But regardless of their idiocy, um, it still seems to me that this whole banning white people, cis people, men, is sexist and racist and, dare I say it, cisist. I don't know if cisist is the word, but uh, if it is, and now it is. I've invented a new word, cisist, when you are discriminatory towards cis people, people who are not transgender. So there we go. You're being cisist, Mustafa. Um, anyway, do, 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 do. Uh, where was I? Oh yes, she posted uh, on Facebook uh, this status. Hey, I made as many of you hosts, so please invite loads of BME women and non-binary people. Uh, also, if you've been invited and you're a man and or white, please don't come. Just because I invited a bunch of people and hope you will be responsible enough to respect this is a BME women and non-binary event only. Don't worry lads, we will give you and allies things to do, winky face. So she is saying outright, if you are white, if you are male, please fuck off. We do not want you. We will openly discriminate against you. On the other hand, uh, if you like, uh, you can work for us and we'll just give you things to do and you can go do those for free. If you just want to do things for us, then that, that's fine, we'll be okay that. But you're not allowed to come to the party. It's not for you. It's for the people who aren't part of your demographic. Which, to me, at least, seems a little racist and a little sexist. In that it is entirely racist and entirely sexist. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, she went, she took to uh, the uh, the internet to defend herself uh, as part of a, she did a video, uh, which is what I will now be responding to. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's give that a go. 20th of April at 5pm, no more than 12 BME women and non-binary people will be allowed to congregate in the ground floor of the Students' Union in a room named after the formidable black activist and revolutionary communist Angela Davis. The nature of the gathering was a political meeting to discuss how we, as BME students, are going to campaign around the issues that have been raised by liberation movements on campus and the most recent occupation. And that is all it was. It was not an anti-racism rally, nor was it an event to celebrate the cultural diversity in the institution, and most definitely not an equality protest, as it was dubbed by the media. Interesting. Interesting. Um, fine, okay, so it wasn't against racism. It wasn't for equality. It was just a political discussion between students in which you discriminated openly against white people and males. Yes, yeah, sorry, um, but suggesting that uh, it wasn't pro-equality doesn't mean that your sexism and your racism is forgiven, is negated, that's not how that works. But carry on, you know, maybe you've got something important to say. The backlash following on by the, uh, following on from the skewed uh, original article in the tab was an outrageous distortion of facts and ironically did the opposite of what this meeting was meant to achieve. The meeting was called for by BME women and non-binary people, which I, as a representative of this community, listened to, fully supported and facilitated the space for. Minority peoples organising uh, autonomously is not new, and if our right-wing critics put as much time into researching the, struggle, the history of our struggles that they do into smearing us all over social media, then they might have seen they might have uh, not been so outraged by our intimate meeting. Well, uh, critics, sure, but uh, right-wing, I'm not so certain about, to be honest. Uh, I myself am predominantly left-wing, and um, Sargon describes himself as a classic liberal. He is prone primarily left-wing again. In fact, everyone I've seen criticising you has been uh, quite left. Quite, it's, it's just, it seems strange, this odd obsession that feminists have with uh, declaring that anyone 
who uh, disagrees with them, anyone who calls them out, anyone who criticizes them, automatically becomes right wing. It's like it's, um, it's sort of like an insult uh, to them that they, they believe that if you are right wing, you are therefore inherently evil, uh, which I don't believe is necessarily true. Uh, I've done plenty of right wing people who are not evil. Uh, it's because they associate uh, right wing with things like I don't know, fucking Nazis and shit. And to, it, to assume someone is right wing is to call them a Nazi, to call them uh, whatever. And yet, if you just say someone is left wing, at no point do they associate that with, uh, I don't know, fucking Stalin. It's never, you know, you're left wing, therefore you are associated with communism. Although, admittedly, I'm pretty sure these people are. Um, I, I don't understand, I really don't, this strange insult of, ha, your political ideology is slightly different to mine, therefore, you must be wrong. That's not how that works. Feel free to criticize, criticize, criticize someone's political ideology, that's fine. But you'd actually have to criticize their ideology, not um, what isn't their ideology, but someone else's. Because calling us right-wing doesn't make us right-wing. It's like when Anita was all, oh, look at all those white men criticizing me. And all those women who are criticizing you. No, no, it's all, it's all white men. Really? Oh, yes, it's all right-wingers. Sorry to say, lass, I don't think it is. Since the media storm, my position as welfare and diversity officer has been called into question. And rightly so, you uh, racist, uh, sexist uh, bigot. Both times that I ran in student elections for this post, I had won on a manifesto which stated that I represent the most traditionally unrepresented. Surely if you're running for a, an equality opposite position, shouldn't you, I don't know, claim that you're running uh, in order to represent everyone equally for equality? Because that would be equal? Or was that just too obvious to you? Did that, that, that seemed too... Is that just fuck it? No, you're just gonna represent only a specific select group that you arbitrarily decide to be more important than others. Good equality, I like it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, totes all, all of the equality forever. Mm -hmm. Hashtag equality. You fucking idiots. In an unequal society where power relations in the wider world pervade our institutions. How can one possibly represent the needs of all people when people, by virtue of their gender, race, and class, have opposing interests? You're right. I mean, that might require hard work or, or, or nuanced thought or, or tough decisions. I mean, I just... I, it's, it's true. that this, this may end up resulting in you having to put a lot of effort in in order to think about things before you just declare something to be important and, and, and you'd have to sort of recognize that while people are different there are ways in which we can treat everyone the same because a lot of differences don't fucking matter feel free all you like to say but but, 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 but but it would have been difficult to try and make things equal. Yeah. It would have been. Doesn't mean you couldn't fucking do it. If you yourself are not capable of doing it, you shouldn't be fucking running. If you do not believe that you can adequately run and successfully operate the post in a meaningful productive, recognizably beneficial way. Do not run for the position. If you can't do it, don't do it. You don't get to apply for a job and say, well, you know, I won't, I won't actually be able to do the thing that you're asking me to do, but I'd like to. That's not the way that works. The fact of the matter is that you were able to get in anyway, because this is not determined by what it makes sense but by people's opinions. And people are fucking stupid. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I represent the most marginalised people at Goldsmiths. Furthermore, there have been charges made against me that I am racist and sexist to white men. Well, I mean, that would make sense, considering how you were being racist and sexist towards white men. 
I want to explain why this is false. I, an ethnic minority woman, cannot be racist or sexist towards white men. Yes, you can, but. Because racism and sexism describe structures of privilege based on race and gender. No, they don't, though. And therefore, women of colour and minority genders cannot be racist or sexist, since we do not stand to benefit from such a system. Uh, that makes literally no sense. Whatsoever. Even the slightest bit. To suggest that granting one demographic a, a, an inherent ability to be discriminatory, to be bigoted towards another, um, does, does not in any way give them an advantage is to not understand what those words mean. Let me lay it down for you. You claim that in a world such as ours, where being uh, female or non-binary or, uh, I guess, not white or whatever, um, means that you have the right to openly discriminate against a white man with no repercussions. You, you are claiming this, this scenario. You do not have any additional power. This does not in any way benefit you. I'm going to have to say no. It, it, it does. As if you could, for instance, say that things don't count against white people, against men, because you're not white and not male, well then that leads to all sorts of potential scenarios in which you could exert power over them. And not a nebulous kind of power, but an actual form of power that can be quantified. For instance, uh, a, a, I have heard it said that, because of the weird power dynamics that go on, um, that a uh, crimes, certain specific crimes committed against a white man do not count if they are from a black woman, say. Like a black woman could murder a white man and it not count because murder is killing plus power or whatever. In a society when you can openly discriminate in this regard against white men, you have the opportunity to influence them in real, physical, determinable ways. And to suggest otherwise, to suggest that given this inherent privilege, you would in no way benefit from it, is to not understand how privilege works. You are saying, I deserve this right that you don't deserve to get, that means that I can affect you in ways that you can't affect me, and there will be no negative repercussions for me doing so. You are giving yourself additional power and saying, I, me, I deserve to be able to control you. How can you not recognize that this can be used for the benefit of yourself? To suggest that having additional power in no way benefits you is just completely moronic in the highest degree. But please continue because I'm really hoping that at some point you actually, I don't know, come up with something decent. In order for our actions to have been deemed racist or sexist, the current system would have to be one which enables only people of colour and women to benefit economically and socially on such a large scale and to the systematic exclusion of white men, of white people and men, who for the past 400 years would have had to have been subjected to colonisation. Okay, first of all that makes no sense at all. That's not, I don't think, anyone's definition of racism or sexism, but sure, why not, go, go with that. Second of all, we are being colonised. Oh, admittedly, it's, it's not as, um, as obvious as when, say, the English colonised pretty much fucking everywhere. There's a thing called immigration, in which people from other nations come to our nations 
and live here. What else would you call that? We do not live in such a system. We do not know of such a history. Reverse racism and reverse sexism are not real. Oh, you're talking about reverse racism and reverse sexism. That's a, that's fine. Yes, yeah, you're quite right. Those don't exist. This is this is undeniably true. Those things do not exist. They are not real. It's still just sexism and racism. There's no reverse. That's ridiculous. That's to suggest that it only goes one way, which is an inherently racist and sexist position to take. Reverse sex and reverse racism definitely don't exist. Discrimination based on sex, based on race, is just sexist, is just racist. End of. Despite the witch hunt and shameful character assassination the right-wing media have been gleefully whipping up, this isn't about me. And despite desperate attempts to humiliate and denigrate a 27-year-old woman of colour from a working-class immigrant family, this isn't about my struggle. You're right, girl. It's not about your struggle. It's about your racism and your sexism. It's about you being discriminatory and bigoted. Feminists love the term struggle. They always like to talk about their struggle, the struggle that's going on. I would like to introduce to feminists two words that when translated into English mean struggle. The first is Kampf and the second is Jihad. So, go on, feel free to tell me about the black woman's jihad. I am just one person and there have been many people before me and there will be many more after me who will be the targets of racial and gendered abuse. This is only one in a series of attacks upon minority women on campus since the start of the term, which has received national and even international media attention. Um, this isn't an attack. This is calling out racism and sexism. That's not how attacks work. Did, have you ever been attacked? You know how, how it feels to actually be physically attacked? To be, have an attack occur upon your body? Upon, upon your person? To be actually, literally attacked? This is not an attack. You walk up to a fucking Nazi rally and say, RACIST! <laughs> They don't get to respond with, Oh, he's attacking me for being white and male. That's not how that works. That's bollocks. And if we consider the recent scandals regarding BME people in positions of power in the UK, it cannot be just a coincidence that this story has gained huge coverage alongside the smearing of a black candidate who ran in the NUS National Conference 2015 for a full-time role. These attacks upon people of colour are politically and ideologically driven along racial lines. Okay, so the defence originally was, I'm not racist. Then the defence became, I, I, I can't be racist. Now the defence is, you're racist. Good job, lass. Keep up the good work. The thought of people of colour holding positions of power frightens white supremacy. And if in any way we lived under some sort of white supremacist nation, do you think Barack Obama would be President of the United States of America? This is not white supremacist land. The West is not in any way white supremacist. It just isn't. You can say it is all you like. You can say all the people in power are racist. It won't make it true. It just won't. A system built on and sustained through the oppression of BME people, minority genders, and the cheap labour of immigrants. No, this isn't about me. This is about us. This is about our struggle. This is about all minorities. And this is even about every single person in this room. Because in the project for emancipation from all oppressive systems, an injury to one is an injury to all. That's a very strange um, method of using appeal to emotion. I, I've not noticed this before. Uh, it's essentially, what she's suggesting is, they're calling me racist, and that is the same as calling all of you racist. You don't want to be called racist, do you? At which point, presumably, she expects anyone with no brain whatsoever 
to go, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be called racist. I must be on your side. You must be telling the truth. It's just, it's just, it's just, you're beautiful and you're wonderful and you're awesome and I want to, I want to fucking go down on you. Assuming that these audience members are as pathetically weak-minded as she seems to, it might actually work. As it happens, this is on the internet, where not everyone is a complete fucking simpleton. And when you feign neutrality and watch with lips sealed while a young woman is receiving death threats and comments like, <clears throat> that smug self-righteous look makes me, makes me just want to prime and ready the back of my hand. Couldn't give a fuck. People are going to talk to you on the internet. That's what I'm doing right now. I don't care what they say. They can fucking do anything. Not important. Your feelings matter not a jot to anyone. It is irrelevant. If someone talks to you on the internet, guess what? No one gives a fuck. Why should we care? There's no reason. Someone sends you a death threat. Oh no, that's terrible. People get death threats happens all the time. If you put yourself on the internet and say, I don't know, something inflammatory, something incendiary, something potentially, I don't know, racist or sexist, people are going to be called. Cool. Oh, sorry, people are going to call you out. In particular, you're going to get comments like that one talking about your um, uh, smug, self-righteous look, considering that you look smug and self-righteous. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to slap someone for looking smug and self-righteous. Slapping them might be considered wrong. Depends on just how smug and self-righteous they look, I think. And the reason for it. If you look smug and self-righteous because you've just murdered a bunch of people, slapping seems like a bit of an, uh, a sort of, it's not quite enough. If, however, you look smug and self-satisfied because you recognize that you've got away with being racist and sexist, a slap seems pretty justified to me. Then your silence is violence, and we wear the scars. Oh, okay, slow down there. You're saying that if someone on the internet, who is a woman, gets a message that is in some way uh, suggesting violence, then me not saying anything about that is the same as being violent to you, and you are scarred by it. I think you may not understand how reality works. I'll give you a hint. It's not like that. And appeals to, but we're all just human, and ren uh, are rendered hollow and vacuous when we consider a history of colonization based on the ongoing project to dehumanize us. Mm, I don't think that's how colonization works. No one goes to colonize places thinking, well, you know, well, there's probably people already there, and uh, if we go there, then uh, we can dehumanize them. That's not the thought process. The thought process is, we're going to go discover new places, and we're going to put people on them, and those people can live there. That's how colonization works. You send people to a new location where your people are currently not, so that they can live there. That's all it is. At no point is dehumanization important or even relevant you fucking idiot we are simply not just individuals and oppression doesn't happen in a vacuum social relations are encumbered by power and who holds what power over who is determined by our material conditions over whom the difference between the way we experience prejudice and the way a white man might be discriminated against is that our discrimination is always marked by the very fact of our gender and our race in relation to a wider system of domination which historically privileges the white male coloniser over us whose bodies are colonised. First of all, bodies can't be colonised. No one is settling on your body, there are no settlers. You, you are a body, not a place. We cannot go to you, we cannot send people to you, we cannot set up towns and cities and things on you. That is physically impossible, you fucking moron. Second of all, you're in England, okay? This is white people territory. We do not colonize England. England is ours. I, uh, 
this is not a white colony that white people turned up in and were like, fuck it, let's take this shit. It's fucking ours. If anything, non-white people are trying to take it from us. What are you doing here? Being all, this is my land, what are you doing colonizing it? No, it fucking isn't. As it happens, I don't give a fuck. I could not care less who lives in England. You could be white, you could be orange, you could be black, you could be grey, you could be turquoise. Your skin colour does not matter to me. I could not care less. Anyone can live here if they like. Doesn't bother me at all. Okay? I don't care. But to suggest that white people are colonising England is to not understand how colonization works or how England works. You fucking simpleton. This consistently serves us to remind this consistently serves to remind us that we have no stake in white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. Ah yes, good old uh, white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. First of all, the Queen. No patriarchy. Second of all, Barack Obama. No white supremacy. Third of all, there's nothing fucking wrong with capitalism. It is only through the miracle that is consumer capitalism that you are alive here and now making videos decrying its very existence. It is the only reason that we live as long as we do, that we have access to everything that we have, that I am using this technology right now to make this video responding to your video that you made on technology that exists because of capitalism. It is the reason that we are so, more, so much more advanced than nations that are not capitalist in nature. Capitalism is fucking brilliant. Stop saying it's evil, because it's not. Whereas white supremacy has everything to lose. Because white supremacy has everything. Because the entire world is a safe space for the white powerful men. <laughs> Fucking moron. <laughs> oh. Is it really? Is the, the entire world a safe space for white men? I so, if I just go to Saudi Arabia now, I'll be treated like a king, will I? If I go live in Africa, they'll be fine with that. If I go to some. I go to China. I'll be revered like a god. I'll be safe from everything and everyone. Everyone will treat me like royalty because I'm white and male. I don't think you understand how the world works, girl. Please figure it out. You are a representative at a university. You ought to at least have a brain. Because people who benefit from white supremacy will never truly understand what it feels like to be reminded of the tra trauma of their ancestors' oppression, or the creeping and paralyzing sensation of fear when an abusive boyfriend you're trying to leave won't let you. And you know that two women in the UK are killed by their male partners every week. <sighs> Overwhelmingly, men are the victims of violence more than women. Men make up the vast majority all violence. Domestic violence is about 50-50, sometimes tilting towards men, sometimes tilting towards women, depends on where you're at. Also, if you want to talk about ancestors being enslaved, I suggest you look up the term slave and where it comes from. I'll give you a hint. Just remove the E. They will never really know what it's like to feel terror at the thought of disclosing to a friend that you were just sexually assaulted because you know the society likes to paint women and girls as liars, and that if you're a woman of colour, the backlash is tenfold. First of all, citation needed. Second of all, people do lie. Men lie, women lie. And when it's about something like sexual assault or rape, such a lie destroys a person and is, in my mind, akin to murder. To say, that man raped me, is to entirely destroy his life, is to torture his mind, 
it is to make everything about him collapse and crumble around him as his life disintegrates. This is why it is so important that girls and women do not lie about rape, but they do. And this feminist mentality of listen and believe has led to countless destroyed lives in the name of girls are fantastic, women are wonderful. Stop treating women like they're perfect. Women do lie. And this lie in particular is one of the worst of all. But this also reminds me that we have everything to gain. Women, LGBTQ+, disabled and BME people will never apologise for taking back space, especially in the face of a society that directly benefits from our systematic, systematic exclusion. Okay, you're not taking back space because in order for that, it would have to have been taken from you in the first place. Do you not see how that works? What you're doing is taking space. That's not taking back space. You have to have previously owned the space in order for it to be taken back. What you're doing is taking. Also known as stealing. Generally considered wrong. You're saying, this is mine now, not yours. You can't have it. You are saying, this was once free and open and everyone could have a piece, but now you can't. Now only I'm allowed to. You're not. I'd call that immoral. To, de to deny the legitimacy of this claim is to commit an act of violence. To deny the, legitimacy, the legitimacy of this claim is an act of violence. That's so fucking stupid. Do you have any idea what violence is actually like? Have you ever even fucking experienced violence? Oh god, you utter cunt! Fucking what? I deny the legitimacy of your claim because it's bollocks. At the same time, I have been in no way violent towards you. There was no potential for injury. There was no physical contact made, or even attempted. When you say it's an act of violence, you are not understanding what the word violence means. And again, with this strange idea of Words being redefined to mean stupid feminist things. I'll tell you what, I'm going to redefine some words as well. I'm going to redefine woman as paedophile and of colour as rapist. So bearing in mind that uh, you self identify as a woman of colour, you are now a paedophile and also a rapist. Do you like that? Is that okay? We're going to stick with that? Good. Okay, paedophile rapist. Um, and that is not to say that you rape paedophiles, but uh, that you are a paedophile and also a rapist. Paedophile, comma, space, rapist. Paedophile rapist. That is you. That is you now. You are now a paedophile rapist because I've defined you as such. You see how stupid it is? You fucking paedophile rapist. To appeal to a liberal interpretation of oppression is oppression and must be resisted. use a literal definition of oppression is oppression and must be resisted. How can you be this dumb, this stupid, this retarded, this fucked up? There's a reason we define words. It's so people know what the fuck we're talking about. What you are suggesting is that the definitions we have don't count, only your definitions count, and that if people use the definitions we have that make sense, that have legitimacy, that are used in the real world, 
that they are oppressing you. Thinking that oppression is uh, something that can be literally explained, that can occur, that can be pointed out, is oppression. To suggest that uh, things that are oppression are oppression is oppression. And to suggest that things that aren't oppression aren't oppression is oppression. I just, I don't understand how you can be so stupid. Surely no one is this dumb. Surely this is just a troll or something. This has to be made up. This has to be fake. Because no one is so utterly retarded as to be as fucking stupid as you. I would hope for the sake of the future of humanity. Because if you are the kind of utter, atrociously retarded cunt that our universities are churning out these days, then I have no hope for the future of humanity whatsoever. When the positions of the most privileged people in society are threatened by us, they do everything they can to cling on desperately to their power. But if the right wing media and our opponents think they've scared us into silence or distracted us from our struggle, then it is them who should be scared because we are not going down without a fight. Simply, we are not going down. Women and non-binary people of colour reject any view which suggests that we live in a post-racist, post-sexist society that is uninformed by class relations. We reject this view not only ideologically, but because our lived experiences force us to know the facts of our oppression. Would this be that non-literal oppression you were talking about earlier? There are other ways to describe non-literal. Fake, false, fictitious, bollocks. Non-real oppression. Somehow I don't see that as being that big an issue. Because you see, I don't give a fuck about things that don't exist. You saying, but my, but my fake oppression is like someone saying, but you're gonna burn in hell. Why the fuck would I care that something that doesn't exist wants to hurt me? It doesn't fucking exist. Who gives a fuck? We are BME, we are disabled, we are queer, we are angry and we are organised. We will not be silenced, we are militant. The world is not ready for minorities to challenge the status quo, but resistance to our resistance is futile. When you call yourself militant and when you refer to yourselves with terms that the Borg use, it makes me want to oppose you even more. There is no good reason for you to exist. If you continue to be this stupid, if you continue to be this arrogant, and if you continue to espouse violence and destroying something that works so well in the name of uh, equality that doesn't really make sense because it's not actually about equality but about inequality I'm gonna say fuck off and when you and your militant friends try to assimilate me with violence I will resist you and my resistance will not be futile because even if I die resisting you I still win and you still lose because I did not join your hive mind. It is better to fight for something good than to die resisting people attempting to take away your freedom than it is to live under some authoritarian, collective horror show, the kind that you want 
to be perpetuated everywhere. I will not accept Islam. Sorry, feminism. Not my cup of tea. And I'll end with one quote from an old Mexican proverb. They tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Thank you for listening. Just looked at the title of your video. Goldsmith Students Union officer refutes accusation of racism and sexism. Really? Refuted! I refute you, sir! You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Fuck off, everyone. And of course, good luck.